Hello, welcome to Ildefonso Inc. Or as I've learned from our guest today, it's Ildefonso Inc. <laughs> yeah. Is that correct? <laughs> Is that correct? Perfect. Okay, so yeah, if you're an American, you might pronounce it Ildefonso. If you're global or speak Spanish, Ildefonso. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm currently in Southern California, and our guest today is Julia Martin. You're in Barcelona, right? Yeah, exactly. And it is uh, it is the I say morning because I'm a I'm a late riser, 11:30 <laughs> um, a.m. here. It is 8 p.m. in Barcelona right now. Mm -hmm. uh, how's your week been going so far? It's been great. I've been waking up very early compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> What time do you wake up at? I wake up at 6 a.m. That is early. Yeah, I usually I usually wake up at around 7:30, but I like my my brain doesn't start being fully functional until 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> We've met on LinkedIn. You had posted a music management rights kind of PDF that I thought was super cool. And we connected and uh, we've met once before and we kind of found a couple different topics that I, I want to talk about with you. Um, I'm really curious to talk about the music scene in Barcelona um, and talk about your time working at uh, the radio station in Catalonia and uh, building, you, you had used this word in our previous conversation, but super fans, I think that was a really cool word that we could talk about. Um, and then, yeah, we'll touch on a little bit of um, how the Spanish music scene does rights management and then how uh, globally we do it. And so um, let's get right into it. So why don't you tell us just a, a brief kind of overview of you and, and how you got into music? Yeah. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. And yeah, so I got into music when I was 13 years old. I started playing drums. It was my dream since I was very little, but it wasn't until I was 13 that I started playing drums and taking classes, taking lessons. And yeah, so basically when I was 16 years old, I started uh, to touring with different bands and artists from Spain. And it was a really cool experience. It lasted till this year. But now I'm taking a break on touring and I want to focus more on music business. So I started playing like real paid jobs when I was 16 years old. And I studied music performance as a drummer and jazz studies. And then I graduated in college with a music business degree. So that's when I got like very interested in the business side and the industry and learning how everything works. So, yeah, and we met on LinkedIn because I'm <laughs> recently posting a lot of stuff related more to the music industry side and not as much like my artistic side because I also uh, produce and make my own music. But right now I'm focusing more on the music industry. So, yeah. What drummers were you inspired by growing up? Who are some of your favorite drummers? Um, Carter Buford, I would say, from Dave Matthews. It's one, I think it's my most preferred drummer. And then also my teachers, because usually I, of course, all the classics like rock, I really like rock and jazz and funk. Um, how is it called? Purdy? I don't remember his, yeah. What, what, uh, what, uh, what name is it? Bernie Purdy, I think. Oh, okay. I don't think I've heard of him. He's like the uh, per, funky oh, drummer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. Uh huh. Maybe I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Ber but... Bernard Purdy. Yeah, um, I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, he played uh, the Purdy Shuffle. Um, and was he on Rick Beato? Yeah, he was on Rick Beato's yeah, exactly. channel. So Steely Dan, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think his vibe and the way he plays, he's like, he's super musical. And yeah, I think this 
two drummers were like one of my main references when I was growing up. But then, of course, uh, all my teachers really stood with me. And I saw like there, there are great teachers here in Spain, very talented people. I had uh, the pleasure to study with Tony Pages and Salvador Niebla, for example, to name a few. And they are savage. So, yeah, I learned from all of them. It was very inspiring. And yeah. That's awesome. And what artists did you tour with in Spain? What was, what was that genre that you were playing? So I played, when I was small little, I played in funky bands for weddings. And I also played like rock with a guy called Daniel Reef. And I played with Ojo de Buen Cubero, which is a band. It, now it's, they are not playing anymore, but it was a band that it was fashion, fusion and rumba, you know, Spanish rumba. And yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, I did one tour. And recently, for example, I played with um, a Catalan songwriter called Pau Aibé. He mixes um, indie pop, a little bit dark, but he did one, uh, one album, which was like samba, but in Catalan. And so it was like a lot of rhythm, a lot of stuff. And I played in the store, which was my last tour recently, I played keyboards and percussions. And I, and I always, uh, I was a singer as well. So it was like getting out of my comfort zone because I was not a drummer. It was my first time not being the drummer, you know. So it was very, very cool experience as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool that you're able to do that multi-instrumentalist role. Those are really big roles on a tour, and that's cool that you're able to do that. So when you guys tour, um, how, lo how long of stretches would you guys do? Um, and what are some of the key cities that uh, you would play in in Spain? So I played in Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, um, then in the south, Malaga, which is very, very beautiful. It's a place that it's right now, it's getting a lot of cultural stuff. We really recommend it for people to go there. And what else? Galicia. And then in the north, in Bilbao. And also in, on the islands. So we have Balear Islands. We went there, Mallorca, Menorca. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you guys, when you guys are touring through Spain, are you in sprinter vans or are you guys in buses? How are you flying? What kind of travel is that like? So it depends um, of the band and, and the money we have, <laughs> like the booking <laughs> agents and stuff. But with the last tour, it was bands and taking some flights, mainly. Cool. So yeah. that's that's really interesting. And uh, what's your favorite venue to play in Spain? Wow. Okay. So for the ones that I've played, I I have a really good memory because of the people, like the fans and everything. I would say Apollo in Barcelona. Okay. okay cool. Or Rathmatat, which we did a sold out as well there, and both in Barcelona. They are like the big venues for pop artists, which are not studios, of course. So um, I would say these two, Apollo and Rathmatath. That's awesome. And what kind of what kind of drums do you play on tour? Do you use like a backline that they provide, or do you bring your kit with you? What do you, what what brand do you prefer to play? Usually, I bring my kit and my cymbals and everything because usually here, at least in Spain. Uh, you can find anything, <laughs> like <laughs> bad drums or some crazy stuff. <laughs> and I use uh, Ludwig. I oh, used to nice. tour with Yamaha, but okay. I switched to Ludwig. I love both. Actually, the hardware is still Yamaha because I think they are the best, <laughs> <laughs> at least in that. But yeah, I, I love the drums that I have right now. And That's yeah. awesome. And what about cymbals? What do you play for cymbals? Symbols I play right now. I have a set uh, of Istanbul. Oh, awesome! Those are great. That's but cool. I would like to get the K custom by Siljan. Oh, nice. Probably someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So uh, you also did an internship. Uh, well, actually, before that, you were at a music kind of academy, right? And that's where 
Rosalia was also studying. And so what is that academy um, that's in Catalonia? Or yeah. is that in, yeah, okay. So what, what is that music academy? So first, the first music academy uh, was the Yellow Music, which is like atelier for musicians. Okay. Um, this was like when I was studying full-time uh, drums. Uh, Rosalia also studied there, but then she did. She went to the same college as I did, which is a Smoke. Uh, it's where she graduated and I graduated, but I didn't meet her because she was very old there uh -huh. um, compared to me. And yeah, so that is called Smoke. It's like the main college of music. And yeah, it was great, great experience for years full time studying and working <laughs> <laughs> and and what were they teaching you what was the focus uh for that academy at least for the classes that you were taking yeah so basically it depends on the department that you're taking so some people are doing like performance other are doing like sonology like sound engineering and producing and there are others who do music business and then compo composition so it depends on what you choose, but then there are also subjects which are like mixed and you meet a lot of people from different departments. And yeah, it's, it's a great experience because you have your own subject and then you can go like, you have groups for playing, you know, and you might know somebody who is like a great bass player or, you know, and you can create a lot of connections. That's awesome. And then your internship, uh, this is, uh, is it Catalonia Radio? Yeah. So what was that like and, and what did you learn and, and what, is the, what is the radio station's um, vibe like in that region and, and, and all of that? <laughs> so in my case, I was in one of the main radio stations and in the Department of Classical Music which was kind of cool because I, my background is not classical, so I learned a lot. And I met a lot of great journalists there and a lot of producers, sound engineers as well, and like the CEOs. It was a great experience, um, very full immersed. And the, um, the main thing that I would say is that I, I was able to see how everything works. So it's like a big corporation you know, you, you have the white papers, meaning you need to know what you can say, what you cannot say, how to say things, all of that. And you get to see the behind the scenes, how things are prepared, you know, interviews. And then if something went wrong, but it's like on life, you know, how you edit, how you go about it. All of that stuff is pretty cool. And also like the promotion of the radio. And right now, like my generation see radio sometimes like something that is not working anymore. But once I was there, I saw that that's not true. At least because mm. here in Spain, they get a lot of um, public money. Mm. So they get like, um, do you say it? Um, grants? Yeah, exactly. They get grants. <laughs> and... And actually you see like the charts and metrics and there are a lot of listeners. So wow. yeah, it was pretty cool because my office was like, I, I could see the office of the people who were doing like the pop part of the radio. And so it was great meeting them as well. They were like more crazy hippie people, but of <laughs> course very hardworking. And the classical guys were like more, guys and ladies were more like, you know, <laughs> it was great to see. <laughs> Do you, do you guys have the show called Frasier over there? Have you ever seen that show? No. Oh, you what have to about? watch, you have to watch Frasier. It's about uh, a, um, he's a psychologist who has a radio show in Seattle in the United States. And mm -hmm. he listens to classical music and drinks fancy wine. And he's hilarious. He's always <laughs> getting into trouble. It's kind of like Seinfeld. I don't know if you mm -hmm. are familiar with Seinfeld, but like, yeah. like that or, um, yeah, it's really good. Especially if you worked in radio, you should definitely check out Frasier. Oh my it's God, so I'll good. do that. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, so, um, so you, you worked in the radio and then, um, yeah, recently we've been kind of talking about your, uh, 
you know how how you see the industry going in in Barcelona. You you sent me a playlist of rising stars, um, as well as kind of like the classical sound or or at least the more traditional sound, um, which I love both. Uh, so yeah, like overall, what would you say is the state of the music scene in Barcelona, and maybe a little bit as far as to how it is in Spain more broadly? Mm -hmm. So I think right now it's very, very alive. There are a lot of new kids and, you know, the new generations that are coming. They are very creative. I think um, we'll have a great um, wave of new artists, big artists, hopefully. Um, I see it's a very, it's a scene, you know, it's very cultural. There are people from Cuba. There are people from all over the world, actually, from Berlin from South America in general. And I think all of us are like mixing together. There are a lot of jams in the city. And so people just, you know, connect and start bands. And yeah, I see there's a lot of cultural stuff going on. And a lot of people are trying to record music and release music and promote. And yeah, it's very, very cool at the moment. And when Yes. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. No, yeah. And one good thing that I'm observing at the moment is that people here in Spain, um, mainly in the big cities, but in general, they are mixing like Spanish with English and making songs like that or Catalan with Spanish and English. And, and it's not weird anymore, you know? It's like, it's very cool. And I think it's because all of us are starting to talk with this hybrid bilingual or multilingual, you know, um, with our friends in <laughs> everywhere, even in, at school, you're like sometimes talking, it's like weird, but it's part of our cultural background at the moment. And like, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I have a friend, she's in, she's in London and she makes music in English, but now she's starting to mix it with Catalan. And she has a, she has a, an audience there and a fan base and she explains what is she, what she's talking about and people like it, you know, so it's, I think things are changing and it's pretty cool. Yeah, when I was in Barcelona, there was a lot of um, like rich history with the arts. So who are some of your favorite artists like that? Are you inspired by the, the cultural history of Barcelona or Catalan? Or like, how would you say um, that plays an influence? Yeah, I think all of us are. Maybe we're not that aware sometimes, but all of us are. For example, in Barcelona, all the architecture, but in Catalonia in general or Spain, I would say like we have great poets, great writers like Cervantes, uh, García Lorca. And I would say like, to me personally, I love Dali and Picasso and Miró. Yeah, These three I love artists. Mido. Yeah, did you went to the museum? I did, I did. He's probably my favorite artist. Yeah, right? It's How do you pronounce his first name? Miro. Uh, that is, Pre that's his last name, but his first name is J-O-A-N. Jo ah, Joan Miro, yeah. Joan. 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 Like, Joan. Joan. Yeah. Okay, Joan Miro. Yeah. Because I know he's particular about it, because... Isn't it like a Catalonian name? Yeah, it's very typical here. Okay, yeah. Joan. Okay. Joan. Joan Miro. Joan Miro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really like him. So are there new, like how is the art scene in modern times? Do you, do you feel like there is still a representation of like other mediums in uh, the regions of like Catalonia and uh, Barcelona? Yeah, I think, I also, like mixing it with music, I see a lot of cross, um, cross mediums. You know, a lot of people are connecting like visual artists with musicians or designers and videographers. And there's a very mix of different mediums and styles. And yeah, you can see it everywhere. You know, like there's this place in, in Barcelona called Magba. It's like the square of skaters. And it's a mm. museum, you know? That's awesome. And you see it, everything is very alive. And yeah, 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 definitely. 
So how do you guys interact with technology in terms of the music industry? I'm always curious to see if there's a specific platform that's more dominant in a specific region. So would you say that there's a streaming platform that your peers are like you sent me Spotify. Is that the dominant platform for you and what people are listening to in Barcelona? Yeah, I would say Spotify definitely and maybe Tidal. Okay, cool. But yeah, mostly, mostly uh, Spotify. And then what about for DAWs? Like, are you guys using Logic more or Pro Tools or what, what are you gravitating towards as yeah. far as like creative tools? Yeah, so I think the main three are Ableton, Pro Tools, and Logic. That's cool. what I've seen the most. Yeah. Do, uh, do creatives lean towards using Apple computers or PCs? Yeah, there's a battle in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say at the moment it's winning Apple. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And then um, what about like original content as far as television goes? Are there shows that are regional that are shot in Barcelona and, um, you know, capture like the essence of the city? And is there or are you mostly watching global content uh, from out here or like um, London or, you know, who, is there mm -hmm. any kind of original productions that you guys are excited about? Yeah, um, I would say there are a lot of things that are being recorded here in Spain and Barcelona. I think Netflix used to be in Barcelona, now it's in Madrid only and Canarias. But, but yeah, there's a lot of things. People are here, people are very proud about their culture, about their cities. And there are a lot of TV series mainly, as well as films, but yeah, TV series recorded here. And it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. And of course, people watch other things like worldwide, but they do it on Netflix or YouTube mainly. Okay. And what about like, what are, what are some of the big series then? And then where do they play those? Like, is that, um, do, does the the big series that come from Spain are they licensed onto Netflix or are they broadcast on like local channels or like do you guys have access to BBC or do you have your own version of that or what would be like the main hub of the latest kind of Spanish TV and film? Yeah, so I would say it's Netflix on one side. Then it's filming. Filming. I don't know if you guys know it. No, uh, uh. It's like an alternative uh, platform, like streaming okay. platform for films and TV shows, and it's more like indie stuff. But it okay. there's great documentals and TV series as well. And then local TV. I would say we don't have like BBC here. I mean, you can access online, but you don't have like the channel. Maybe if you pay, but I'm not the best person to talk about TV because I <laughs> barely watch it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm always so curious, like, because, you know, when you travel, you log into Netflix and it's completely different. You know, there's like yeah. completely different series everywhere you go. And um, even when I'm here in the States, like just going over to different people's houses, depending on what their cable network is or like, you know, there could be TV on demand that has... BBC channels or it has AMC or it has all these different stuff. And I'm just always curious, like what every region is most excited about from what they're getting. Like for instance, um, Canada has uh, CBC, I believe is what it is. And they have a lot of great shows like, and mm -hmm. sometimes those shows will get licensed over to Netflix or whatever, and we'll be able to watch it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I'm always interested in that. And then uh, what about, um, what about your uh, PRO? So, you know, you, you had mentioned um, in our conversation before that you recommend that artists are on BMI and ASCAP and Sound Exchange, but Spain kind of does things their own way as well for the country itself. Yeah. So basically we have 
two companies. One is called Sky and the other one is called Unison. So Unison is more new compared to Sky and they both control like royalties, mechanical royalties mainly. And But yeah, I think Unison is implementing KI and it's implementing like new technologies. And right now it's like one of the top. And also we have BMAT. They help um, uh, keep track of royalties played on radio, for example, TV shows and stuff. And I would say these three, but mainly it's as guy at Unison. So when you have one song and you want to make sure that it's licensed and it has like all the royalties on track and you go to Sky or Unison and they do everything for you. That's cool. And are they are they like a big company or are they accessible? Like if, if you if you need help registering your song, do they feel accessible? Because for us, BMI and ASCAP are massive. And like, if you go to Nashville and you see the BMI headquarters, it is so huge. Um, and so sometimes that could be daunting. Is there an advantage in working with the local kind of regional uh, PRO collecting? Yeah, I think compared to, to USA, um, everything here feels small. So I remember when I was in New York and everything there felt like, oh my God, everything is big in, in America, in North America. And, but yeah, here, I think they are the main ones in, in Spain, basically, but they are very accessible and everything is very democratized in that sense. They want you to go there, actually. So they always have their, the doors open for you. So yeah, it's very easy to go and just do it. That's awesome. Yeah. And then what, what other, um, music industry components are you thinking about as you're you know transitioning into the business side are you primarily focused on the the music scene out here or are you um trying to spend more time with uh your peers in barcelona like how how are you envisioning you know your approach moving forward yeah so at the moment we always hear in Spain say that we come, we go later, like we come mm. later than compared to America. Meaning in in USA, you always are the ones like leading mm -hmm. the industry, mm -hmm. and then we learn from that. So what I'm trying to do is like learn directly from people in in USA, like you guys, and learn as much as I can to bring all that info here, but. Mm, I don't close the doors to go and live abroad and work abroad for other companies because I see a lot of potential out there as well. So I don't want to you know, close my own doors. So I'm always mm -hmm. open and on the lookout for something better and to develop my own career as well. So, yeah. What are, what are some of those things that you've picked up on as you're getting more connected to the industry that you wish more Spanish artists were aware of? Yeah, so one thing it's like the professionalism that you guys, you guys do everything in a very professional way, you know, and people, um, right now people in Spain are starting to admire the, your culture of entrepreneurship and being open about failing or starting a business, failing and come back stronger and, you know, Feeling as much as you need until you succeed. And that is encouraged even, you know, like fail fast and win faster. But here it has been very like kind of a shame. You know, if you mm. try something and you fail, people were like very rude, but now it's changing. And the young generations were like, we're going to try. We know we're going to fail, you know, like I'm okay exposing myself like in this Combo, for, for example, uh, I know I'm making mistakes because English is not my main language, but still, you know, I'm, I'm out here and trying my best and doing my best. And so I think this concept, for example, is something that I've learned from you guys. And it's, I, I appreciate it so much. And the more I connect with people um, overseas, I see they have this mindset, like just do yourself, be humble and be open to learn, you know, and take action, do as much as you can. So 
that is something that I always bring with me and that I wish that I was raised that way, you know, like the educational system and, and culturally. But now things are changing. And so I would see the same for artists, like artists need to be open to release their music. Some people here, I see a lot of talent and they are like kind of ashamed or like they don't know if they want to take the step, you know, if they want to take the lead. And it's like, guys, you need to do it. You know, <laughs> it's now, you're alive right now. You never know. So just take the chance and enjoy it, you know. So I would say that. And also, I think that you guys keep more in mind the fact that if you want to leave off your music, you are in the music industry. So mm -hmm. this is a business. You need to know the ins and outs. You need to know the rules. Like it or not, you need to know it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be better for you if you know it. So I think people hear sometimes some artists or musicians be like, no, I don't want to know about that. I, I don't talk about money. And it's like, hey, do you, you want to make a living out of this or not? And if yes, you need to know a little bit about music royalties, a little bit about management, a little bit about booking, a little bit about everything. Because if you end up with a team, you will need to know if they are doing it correctly or if you can, you know, make a suggestion or, you know, or get advice or ask things, you know, you need to always be open minded and curious. So I would suggest that know a little bit about everything and be open to go at the top. I think Rosalia lead it that way to a lot of people here because she went full in and she's very smart she's very clever and she knows a lot about a lot of things not only singing not only flamenco you know so yeah all of that you guys inspire all of us <laughs> <laughs> well I, I, it's funny because when we go to europe we're always inspired by europe we're like oh it's so beautiful here and there's so much art and good food and good coffee and <laughs> so it's mutual we learn a lot from that's from you cool too. yeah i i loved my time in uh, madrid and barcelona um, yeah, Madrid had some of the best food I've ever had, um, which I'm going to have to have great. you on to one of my other uh, podcasts called Breakfast With, where I'll have some breakfast and then you have some breakfast and we'll just talk about random stuff. Oh. But um, I would love that because you guys have the best food. Um, I wrote down, um, let's see here. I wanted to ask if you know, okay, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. Merc Mercado de San Miguel. Yeah, Mercado de San Miguel. Yeah, quite Mercado good. Mercado de San Miguel. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, that place was so good. Um, the tapas there and the seafood yeah. was so fresh. Like, yeah, impressive. Was, yeah, really, really good. And then um, I also went to a place called La Salud Gracia in <laughs> Barcelona. La Salud. Yeah. Do you know that place? Yeah, Gracia. <laughs> <laughs> it's then, one of the main neighborhoods. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, there was really good seafood. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful town. So uh, before we end, you sent me a playlist of some up and coming artists. Uh, I wanted to ask you about a couple and just ask, you could tell us kind of what what's it like for um, an artist like them? Are they are they global? Are they focused on the Spanish market? Um, so, so off of the playlist that you sent me, I, I checked out. Um, so one of the artists here, and I'll include the playlist in the in the description, but um, con. Contisinio Guitarra de la Fuente. Yeah. That's a hard one, even for Spanish. <laughs> How do you pronounce it for, properly? Contisinio. Contisinio. And then Guitarra. Guitarra Rica de la Fuente. Yeah. Guitarra Rica. Guitarra Rica de la Fuente. Guitarrica de la Fuente. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so tell me about this artist. So this artist is from Andalusia, if I'm not wrong. He's, he's a Spanish artist and he's focusing on the Spanish market and South American market. I know he produces with people in Miami and in Spain, as far as I know. And yeah, he stayed from a small village thing. So he's from like the countryside, he brings that part of the culture. 
and he's been doing like great tunes and connecting with a lot of people. But I think his career at the moment, at least, is focused on on the Spanish market and yeah, Spanish language in general. Yeah, he was really good. And then um, the other one I really liked was, uh, let's see here, is it um, Lucia Fumero? Yeah, Lucia Fumero. Yeah, Lucia Fumero. She's really good too. What, what's her story? So she, her background is from jazz. I think she mm. signed with a jazz label at the moment. And yeah, his dad is also a musician, a great musician. And yeah, I I I, add, I added that song with Rita Payez, I think. Rita Payez as well is very famous. She's becoming international. And Lucia and Rita, they come from jazz background as well. So yeah, she's she's also focusing on the Spanish and European market, I would say. And then, um, and then I also saw, let's see, uh, the other one is, her name is, oh yeah, Re okay, so I see. Oh, they did the song together. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So both of them are really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Rita okay. did a, a featuring with John Batiste last year. Oh, okay, awesome. And she's playing with a lot of artists. So Rita suddenly make like a boom and uh -huh. she's becoming kind of international. She has a lot of listeners on Spotify only. So, yeah. Yeah, I could see her being on NPR then. Do you guys have um, access to NPR? Do you, do you get that in? We, we don't do it on like the normal TV, but as I said, YouTube. a lot of people, yeah, go into YouTube. Yeah, yeah, NPR is really great. Um, yeah. Do you, what would be your equivalent? Would that be the radio station that you worked on, um, Catalonia Radio? Mm, mm, I would say it would be some like COPE or some radios from like they are centralized in Madrid. Okay. Like Los Noventa and all, all that stuff. Are there any other artists um, from Spain and Barcelona that you want the listeners and viewers to check out? Yeah, I would say Big Mirayas. He's like, oh, he studied that. on Berkeley. He played with, with Alejandro Sa. I had the pleasure to meet him and work with him as well. He also recorded one of my songs. So it was like, what? No way. Yeah, I didn't add it on, on the playlist like my songs. But yeah, I would say Big Mirayas. He's working so hard in his music career as a solo artist. He has a great band, so if you ever has have the chance to go see them live, it's crazy. I would say that, yeah. And also, I want to say like Maria La Blanco. I think Maria. she's a singer, um, also also studying in the same college that that I attended. And oh yeah, she, she was think, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she right now she's like doing a duo and playing. Uh, with a lot of bands in Spain. And I know she's going to be really big because she has the talent, she has everything. And she has this magic, you know, she's like very unique and kind of authentic. And she has a voice range that is so crazy. So yeah, I would say <laughs> this. <laughs> awesome. Well, where can our audience find you if they want to follow along on your journey? Yeah, so I would suggest on LinkedIn or also on YouTube, I will send you the links. Because I'm going to start posting some videos. And yeah. I awesome. Well, I'm excited to follow along. And uh, we'll have to have you on some of our other shows on our channels. And um, thank you for taking the time. Um, what's your favorite restaurant in Barcelona? Wow. That is a big one. Let me just think about it one second. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so I would say, like, there's one called Pa Comer Algo, okay. which is like tapas, but Ooh. it's a bit expensive. So I would say, like, one of that it's from my neighborhood, and 
it's like very familiar and cool pizza would say la carla how do you spell that la la Car space c a r l a barcelona pizza pizza okay oh i've seen this place i'm pretty sure whoa you maybe wow I'm, it looks really familiar, but maybe, yeah. I don't know. I, I do remember seeing a couple of these Could little, be, yeah. like, little kind of, like, s small kind of dark bars yeah. in Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I walked past this one, because I'm always, whenever I'm traveling, I'm always looking for the food spots. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you again, um, and we'll we'll make more videos together, I'm sure. And uh, thank you, listeners for and viewers for watching Ildefonso Inc. And we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>